everyone, Sarah here from The Average Tourist, and today I am in beautiful Bon Air. Let's go see what this lovely island has to offer. We visited Bon Air before the pandemic as a stop on our Southern Caribbean cruise. The island of Bon Air has a population of approximately 18,000 people, and there are four languages spoken on the island Dutch, Papiamentu, English, and Spanish. Bonaire is recognized as one of the top destinations worldwide for sustainable tourism, and they are a popular shore diving destination. One of the first things you should see on the island are the pink watered salt pans and pyramids of salt. The production of salt dates back centuries on this island and has a dark history as it relied upon slavery for most of that time. Today, salt is made through solar salt production naturally with the sun, wind, and time. Flamingos are protected by law in Bonaire, and you can see them in the reserve located on the Salt Company land, but only from the side of the road. The next thing to see are the slave huts. As mentioned, historically there were many activities done by slaves brought to the island. The Dutch built huts in the early 19th century for slaves to sleep in that can be seen around the island. The roofs were historically made from thatch, but for tourism, they added sturdier roofs. These huts are no more than cement squares, often not even big enough for someone to stand up inside fully or stretch out while sleeping. While this isn't a positive or uplifting attraction, it's important to learn about the history of a place and to have a better understanding for the awful and inhumane conditions imposed on those who were kept as slaves and forced to work on the island. The next thing to do is to take an island drive. The island has a wide choice of car rental agencies, so you can explore on your own. You can also rent motorcycles, scooters, golf carts, and bikes to sightsee around the island. On your drive, you can spot the brightly painted rocks on the shoreline that indicate popular shore dive sites around the island. It's a beautiful coastline, and I definitely recommend taking the time to see it. Black Bay is another popular attraction in Bonaire. The bar and grill is a great spot to relax and enjoy some drinks and food by the water. My husband's favorite part about it was that it was nicely shaded from the hot Caribbean sun. And before or after you've visited the beach bar, you can enjoy a relaxing day at the beach. Here you can rent beach chairs along the calm Lac Bay. There were plenty of chairs, but not a lot of shade. People were swimming, tanning, snorkeling, and enjoying watching the windsurfers on the bay. Which brings me to my next thing to do, go windsurfing at Lac Bay. This bay has turned into the Caribbean capital of windsurfing. The conditions in the bay are perfect for this water sport. 
The bay waters are shallow, it's sheltered from the rough Caribbean Sea, and the high-speed wind is always flowing. Along the White Sand Beach, you can find numerous rental companies and can even pick up lessons to learn this water sport. But if you don't actually want to try windsurfing, you can always stop and enjoy watching all of the colorful windsurfing sails breezing across the bay. It definitely looked like fun, but probably not something I'd be able to do. The next suggestion I have is to take an island tour. If you've only got a limited amount of time to see the island like we did on our cruise, or you just want a knowledgeable guide, there are plenty of different island tours and companies to choose from. Depending on your interest and activity levels, you can probably find something of interest to you. And when we were walking to the city centre of Kralendyke from our cruise ship, there were tons of companies set up with colourful tents along the walkway promoting their tours. walking through the town of Kralendyke Bonaire and you can see behind me our giant cruise ship. We just finished our excursion and we went to see the salt flats, the slave huts and the surfers paradise the other side, the south side of the island and now we're just taking a quick walk through the city because it looks so pretty and colorful. After our tour we decided to explore Kralendyke and I highly recommend you add this to your things to do on the island. There are two different areas to explore the shops near the cruise port, and then the city centre of Kralendyke where the shops, restaurants and bars are to keep you entertained. We enjoyed walking through the city and seeing all of the colourful buildings. And you can't leave Bonaire without picking up some salt. We stopped at the Bonaire salt shop to grab some true Bonairean salt to take home. It was a great souvenir that was actually useful in everyday life. So we just purchased some salt from the salt shop in Bonaire and I'm excited to get home and use it. The last attraction to see in Bonaire is the local market. This is the arts and crafts market that is typically geared toward cruisers when cruise ships are in port. There are a lot of vendors selling various handiwork, 
food, and drinks. And it's a great way to support local while picking up some souvenirs for family and friends, if souvenirs are your thing. That's everything we were able to see in Bonaire on our full day in port. I hope this list can be helpful to you if you're planning your own trip to Bonaire in the future. Let me know what other attractions or sites I should see in Bonaire when I can finally go back in the comments below. So there you have it, how we spent our full day in the beautiful island of Bonaire. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting more travel related videos very soon.